I don't know that's what a different time issue. the sun will set on June 31st of 2102. You can look that up online. I don't online. know these questions. But, Daryl, listen to me. Listen. you got to let me finish, because this is my point. That libertarianism is I'm better. I'm making a pitch that and you're now, smart enough to be able to decide for yourself, and you don't have a right da- to force your opinions on other people. Uh, first, okay, I right? said you do not have a right to force people to do what you want them to do, and you said, yes, I do. No. So you said that you have a right no, to I force people to do I what you want them to my do. My opinion. Mr. Perry. Hello. My name is Daryl W. Perry, and I represent the Libertarian Wing of the Libertarian Party. I stand before you, as most of these men will recognize, as the most Libertarian presidential candidate seeking the Libertarian Party presidential nomination. I ask each and every one of you tomorrow, vote for Daryl Perry so that I can walk off of this floor as THE Libertarian Party presidential candidate. Governor Johnson. Mr. Perry. Since Mr. McAfee explained what a Libertarian is, allow me to answer the other half of the question how is libertarian different from conservative conservative by definition means someone who supports the status quo the status quo right now is tyranny libertarians believe in freedom the two things are polar opposites governor johnson my second general question mr perry please start Most libertarians think both major parties are bad, but that the Republican Party is, at least as to economic issues, the lesser of two evils. What do you say to people who believe that, in the best case scenario, the libertarian candidate this year might get 10%? In a close election, the libertarian will likely take more votes from the Republican, making it more likely that Hillary will win the election. What What is your argument, what is your response to that line of thinking? Math and history and evidence. Every election cycle, there are exit polls that are done and questions asked of voters that vote for libertarians. If the libertarian were not in the race, who would you have voted for? And it's almost even split between Democrat and Republican with a sizable number that would say, I would not have voted otherwise. Governor Johnson, let us turn, gentlemen, to the economy. My first question goes to Governor Johnson. Donald Trump, when asked to name three functions of government, said national security, health care, and education. Where did he go wrong? I would say that it's a flawed question that was asked of Mr. Trump. They probably intended to ask what is the legitimate function of government, and I would say there isn't one. Although... Although, the Declaration of Independence does say that governments exist with the consent of the governed and are supposed to protect life, liberty, and property. So if there is a government, that's the function. Protect life, liberty, and property. But I think you're smart enough to be your own government. This next question is to Mr. Peterson. He'll start. Should illegal immigration be stopped? Do you believe in open borders? If so, what does open borders mean? No human being is illegal. What what would open borders look like under President Perry? Well, I'll tell you, we already have the policy in place. We just need to remove parts of it. There's a policy called the wet foot, dry foot policy, where if you have dry feet and you're from Cuba, you get to stay in the United States. We need to implement that for every person around the globe. Revoke the wet foot where the Coast Guard looks for people to send them back to tyranny. Governor Johnson, should taxpayers pay for or subsidize education at any level, whether K-12 through or post-secondary education? There should not be government-run schools. That does not mean that I oppose education. I love education, and to quote Mark Twain, I never let my schooling get in the way of my education. 
Every one of you in this room and watching at home can get an MIT education right now absolutely free. They have put all of their courses online. You can take them right now. Go there, MIT. All of the courses online absolutely free. Go to Khan Academy. You can learn anything you want for free. Even President Obama said the three biggest entitlements programs, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, are, in his word, unsustainable. They comprise nearly 50% of the federal budget. What would you do about them? As with everything, I believe they should be completely voluntary. How many people in here, and I actually do want a show of hands, love grandmas? How many of you would donate money to feed grandmas? I do not see a single person that did not raise their hand. That's how you fund Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. Governor Johnson. Mr. Perry, if you don't believe government should force people into some sort of Social Security or forced savings system, what happens when someone has grown old but was too indifferent or irresponsible to have set aside savings? What should happen to that person? I believe I answered that question in the answer to my last question. People here that like grandma would donate to grandma. You would have voluntary mutual aid programs as we did before the government took over Social Security. Governor Forcing Johnson? Forcing people to do things is always wrong. It doesn't matter what good you do with the stolen money. Governor Johnson? Has there, been, has there been global warming? Well, allow me to present Exhibit A. There once was an ice age, and now there's not. <laughs> the real question is, should the government do anything about it? And I say no. Mr. Peterson, what taxes, if any, do you believe in? How should government fund its essential duties and obligations? With all due respect, your question is invalid because it presumes there are essential duties of government. If you want NASA to exist and send things into space, write a check to NASA. If you want the U.S. military to drone bomb children in the Middle East, write a check to the U.S. military, but don't force me to pay for it. Should there be a minimum wage? If not, how do you prevent employees from, as the left often says, exploiting workers? I have a question for those that actually support a minimum wage, and hopefully it's nobody in this room, so look at this as rhetorical. As a small business owner, there are times when I actually don't make the minimum wage based on the amount of hours that I work versus what I bring in. So my question to you is if you support a minimum wage, who should I steal the money from to make up the difference? Governor Johnson? Should government, whether state or local, fund infrastructure, roads, bridges, sewers, electrical grids, and if government does not do it, who or what will? I'll do my best to answer this in 30 seconds. We're in a hotel. Hotels thrive on having customers stay in their hotel, which means people need to get to their hotel, which means that people are probably coming to visit and do stuff. All of these places thrive on customers, meaning that they need a flat surface for all of their customers to come and go from businesses will be incentivized to have these flat surfaces called roads. We don't need to steal the money. Let the people who thrive from them pay for them. <laughs> Voluntarily, of course. Governor Johnson, assume someone has a pre-existing medical condition and cannot get health insurance. What would you do about it? Well, it's not the president's responsibility to make sure that anybody has health insurance. Let's look at St. Jude Hospital for a moment. They take care of children that have cancer. They don't charge the families a dime. They thrive off of private voluntary contributions. Governor Johnson, on trade, would you continue trading with partners who impose tariffs on American goods and on those who engage in, as Donald Trump puts it, currency manipulation? Mr. Perry, 
The Federal Reserve currently is currency manipulation. So if I, as president, were to say that nobody can do any trading of goods or services with a country that is involved in currency manipulation, then nobody could do any goods or, or uh, trade with the United States because we currency manipulate. Regarding free trade, I've got it written right here. It says that no government shall interfere with the trade of goods or services. That's all you need for free trade agreements. Mr. Peterson. What should be done about the Federal Reserve? Is there a legitimate function for the Fed? Let's repeal the legal tender laws that caused Bernard von Nothaus to go to prison for competition with the Fed, and then we can end the Fed. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and I believe that was a felony. <laughs> Governor Johnson. Dr. Fellman, what government cabinet departments would you eliminate? Mr. Perry, are there any government cabinet positions you would retain? No. <laughs> the question is, which one would I eliminate first? And, well, you know, let's just go alphabetical. That's the easiest way. <laughs> let's turn our attention to foreign policy. Mr. McAfee. What do you think of the Iran deal? Does it pose a threat to Israel? And if so, is that a concern of America? Despite the fear-mongering, Iran and the companies within Iran were not trying to build nuclear weapons. They were trying to build nuclear energy. The Iran deal allows them to continue doing that. However, there's a lot of U.S. taxpayer money that goes to Iran. So there are parts that are good, parts that are bad. I've not read the document, so I don't know if the good outweighs the bad, but probably not. Mr. Perry, President Obama has called the Hiroshima bomb an act of evil. Do you agree? Absolutely. Whenever you nuke a large city and kill, what was it, millions of people, that's absolutely deplorable. President Obama was the first U.S. president to go to Hiroshima since the bombing. However, he did not apologize, and I will as soon as possible. Do you believe radical Islam poses a threat to Europe, America, to Western civilization itself? We, the members of the Libertarian Party, rise in opposition to the cult of the omnipotent state. Tyranny is tyranny and hides behind many religions, but the tyrants are doing the hiding. Freedom is the answer, not more government, not blaming people's religion because tyranny is the problem. Mr. Peterson, was it wrong for America to have intervened and fought in World War I? Was it wrong for America to have intervened and fought in World War II? You most certainly have the right to defend yourself, but you do not have the right to provoke someone to attack you in order to defend yourself. The United States military had boats off the shore of Japan to provoke an attack from Japan so that they could claim self-defense. Was it wrong to intervene? Yes, because I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, at some point becomes aggression. We spend more on our military than the next 15 or so nations combined. How large should our military be? Do we spend too much? Where would you cut? We do not need troops in 150-something countries and nearly 900 military bases. I would dare say we do not need a standing army, but at the very least I will say we do not need a standing army funded through theft and coercion. The military should be as big as it can be off of donations and bake sales. Would you, as president, pull the United States out of NATO, the International Monetary Fund, and or the United Nations? Mr. Perry? Absolutely, as soon as possible. Governor Johnson? Mr. Perry, are libertarians isolationists? 
Absolutely not. Calling me an isolationist for not wanting to invade Poland is like calling me a hermit because I don't go invade my neighbor's fridge. <laughs> Switzerland has one of the best foreign policies in the world and they are in no way isolationist. How many people have ever had Swiss chocolate, Swiss cheese, and a Swiss army knife? <laughs> Non-intervention is not isolation. As between the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, which is the most anti-freedom, anti-libertarian? Or put another way, from a libertarian point of view, which is the lesser of two evils? <laughs> They're both equally evil, and to ask which one is the lesser evil is like asking my favorite STD. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> Mr. Peterson, when does life begin? At what point has a pregnancy gone so far that it should be a crime for a woman to have an abortion? The question of abortion is one that is intended to just divide us. I do know that government should not be involved. Money should not be stolen from anyone to pay for any abortion or any abortion alternative services. Mr. Perry, is there a point beyond which, in your opinion, a pregnancy should be illegal? You can terminate a pregnancy without killing the unborn child. And I believe that people should be allowed to adopt said unborn child should they want to do so. Do you believe in any form of gun control? Those who advocate disarming felons for life believe that humans cannot be rehabilitated. I have a friend who 20 plus years ago served eight and a half years in prison for a murder that he did not commit, but he was involved in. Those who advocate gun control say that he should not be able to defend himself, his wife, or his seven-year-old child. I support the right to self-defense regardless of someone's past because I believe that humans can rehabilitate themselves. Should one have to get a government-issued license to marry? If same-sex marriage should be legal, what about multiple spouses? Where, if anywhere, would you draw the line? Since he answered the first part, I'll answer the second. Where do I draw the line? When you force someone into a relationship. All things consensual should be legal. No one should go to jail for anything unless they cause unjust harm to another person. Mr. Perry, North Carolina passed a law that said as to the public sector, one shall use the bathroom that corresponds with the gender on his or her birth certificate. How do you feel about that law? My question is, where does Buck Angel go to the potty if he goes into North Carolina? If you don't know who Buck Angel is, and based on the applause, most of you probably don't, so I'll tell you. Buck Angel is a transgender porn star. Buck Angel was born a female. Buck Angel now looks like Adam Kokesh, only more buff. But Buck Angel still has a vagina. The Republicans in North Carolina say that Buck Angel should go to the ladies' room. I think that is wrong. Let's turn to some general questions about liberty. Governor Johnson, what kind of person would you put on the Supreme Court and should Congress hold hearings on Obama's nominee? I didn't know he was in the House. I didn't plan. Mr. I did Perry. not plan that. Mr. Perry. Yes, Congress should hold hearings. They should also vote, but I would say vote him down, and not because I want to play partisan politics, but because all of the justices that are being nominated are all horrible statists. As far as who would I nominate for a Supreme Court vacancy, well, there's a great Supreme Court judge in the state of Arizona who is a libertarian, Clint Bollock. He's a co-founder of the Institute for Justice. He would stand up for your liberty, and I would put him on the Supreme Court as soon as possible. Mr. Peterson, reportedly some 83% of law professors are Democrats. As a libertarian, you must think this has real-world consequences. What are they? Since I despise Republicans and Democrats equally, I'm not concerned about how many are Democrats. I'm concerned about how many of them are horrible statists. 
The problem is not the political affiliation of the lawyers or the law professors, it's that we have a system that requires us to have so many lawyers. I'm sorry? Can you repeat the question? If a parent chooses not to send his or her child to school, should the government intervene? Absolutely not. The government should not be concerned about where a child is or is not at any given time. The government should not be running the schools. The government should not be intervening when people decide to let their child walk down the street to go to the playground. Should all drug use be made legal or decriminalized, whether marijuana or heroin? And what do you say about people who argue that if you do that, it would lead to more rampant drug abuse? I read statutes for fun, and so far I have yet to find the word tomato in any statute. But I don't think anybody here would say that tomatoes are not legal. I think that every substance, where it, whether it be cannabis or crystal meth, should be absolutely as legal as tomatoes. There should not be any regulations on how much you buy, grow, sell, possess, consume, sell to your neighbor, give to your neighbor, throw in the air to land on the ground, wherever it may be. No regulations. Everything should be as legal as tomatoes. Governor Johnson. Mr. Perry, a follow-up question. If you believe in legalizing all drugs, would you at least make certain drugs illegal for children? As I said, everything should be as legal as tomatoes. I think people are smart enough to know not to give heroin to a child unless under the direct supervision of a doctor. I don't think that people should go to jail, and again, I'm guessing you're defining child the legal way, not the medical way, and those are two distinct things. But again, people are smart enough to know not to give horrible, horrible things to children. Let's look at Portugal, and I'm going over time because everybody else has. Let's look at Portugal for a second. They decriminalized everything 15 years ago. Drug use, drug abuse dropped drastically. Everybody's safer because they're not afraid to go get help if they need it. Right now in this country, people are afraid to go get help because if they go to the doctor, the doctor will call the damn cops. Governor? Governor Johnson, would you at least make certain drugs illegal for children? The Civil Rights Act of 1964 ended discrimination in both the private sector and the public sector. Senator Barry Goldwater voted against it for libertarian reasons. He did not feel it was the government's job to tell a private business owner what to do. Senator Al Gore Sr. voted against it because he opposed integration. If you had been in the Senate, how would you have voted? Allow me to give everyone a history lesson. The segregation in the South was not because necessarily of racist business owners, it was because of racist legislators telling the business owners that they had to segregate the lunch counters. In Virginia, it was business owners that helped the protesters violate the statute by saying, come into my business, violate the law. That should have been outlawed. The forced discrimination should have been repealed. That is the only thing the Civil Rights Act should have done. Mr. Peterson, I have a feeling I know how this answer is going to be. Should someone have to have a government-issued license to drive a car? The government requires licenses for, to for far too many things. The government requires licenses for people to broadcast radio. The government requires licenses to get married. They require a license to drive. What's next? Requiring a license to make toast in your own damn toaster? Absolutely not. Gentlemen, we have come to the end of the question and answer portion of the debate. You now have 60 seconds to make a closing argument since Mr. McAfee went first. Mr. Perry, you may go first. I stand before you today not to promise 1% in the general election, not to promise 5% in the general election, not to promise 15% in a poll. What I stand before you today to promise is that all the way through the November election, I will as boldly as possible and as consistently as possible and as loudly as possible proclaim the ideas of liberty. I want you to help me help you make the Libertarian Party Libertarian again. 
if you want an actual libertarian on the ticket and you want to help the Libertarian Party actually be libertarian again, not with a watered-down message, but with an absolute message of freedom on every issue, every time, vote for me tomorrow so I walk off of this stage the Libertarian Party presidential nominee. Governor Johnson, you have 60 seconds. Parties are supposed to be agnostic when it comes to which candidate they like or don't like. Sure, they have personal feelings. They've got to put them aside. We found out the DNC didn't put it aside, and they basically were a shadow Clinton operation. And we have got to elect Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. you off right now we're going to cut you off right now uh we're going to uh cover right now boys to men philadelphia's own is here and they're performing on stage to the bernie or bust people you're being ridiculous you know Listen, listen, listen to what you did. That you're so aggrieved that you're going to shut this thing down and basically try to ruin this as a political moment for Hillary Clinton um, is, 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 is something. Ready or bust! Ready or bust! Ready or bust! 